friends, welcome back. It's Mechanics of Materials Beam Design. It's chapter 11, level 11, and we've got us a brandy new problem. Now, chapter 11, I got some good news for you. Number one, there's really no new information in this chapter, okay? We're going to take all the tools that we've learned in all the previous chapters, and guess what? Today, we get to be engineers, okay? We are actually going to engineer this beam. What does that beam need to look like to carry that load, okay? And so we're going to be, this is the first time we get to be real designers, design engineers, okay? But really and truly, all we're going to do is take everything that we've learned so far and apply it to this problem. So let's see what we got here. A simply supported timber beam. Simply supported, remember, just means pin here and roller there, okay? has a sigma allowable of 6.5 and a tau allowable of 500 kilopascals, which is 0.5 megapascals, right? That's all that is. So find the cross section of the rectangular beam if the height to width ratio is 1.25. Now what that means is, if I look at the cross section of this beam, it's W wide, and it's 1.25 W tall, okay? Here's our neutral axis, okay? X, X. And so, um, there you go. So, what tools are we going to use to see who is in control here, right? If these are our two things that we can fail, we can either fail signal allowable or we can fail tau allowable, then what are we going to do? Well, we're going to use this equation here, okay, to see if sigma is in control of the design here, or is tau, remember that's the transverse shear equation, is tau in control of the design? So knowing that these are our two tools that we're going to use to see, who, to, to design this, how big is W? What do we need? What do we need? Hmm. You know what we need? We need this. We need M max and we need V max. Okay. We need M right there and we need V right there. How do you think we get those? Hmm. That smells like shear moment diagram kind of stuff, doesn't it? Let's do a shear moment diagram for this real fast. Okay. Let's go. So over here, I have a distributed load, eight kilonewtons times two, four, eight, and eight times eight is 64. Now look, this is a totally symmetric thing here, right? The distances are the same, so guess what? A, Y, you get half, B, Y, you get half. We don't even have to write a moment equation, do we? You get a car, and you get a car. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay, so there we go, kilonewtons, kilonewtons. We did that without math. We used our brain. Now, I'm gonna put this directly under this because, you know, these graphs are directly related to each other, aren't they? So I like to put them one under the other. Okay, here's where all of the interesting things happen. Here's the V, here's the M, this is in kilonewtons. And this is in kilonewton meters, okay? So here we go. First step from here to here is this part of the graph here, okay? This little square right there, which is two times eight, that's 16. So go downhill 16, bloop, there it is, minus 16. Then jump up 32, whoop. Now I'm at positive 16. Now go down uh, this much right here, which is how big is that? That's another eight times four, which is uh, carry the nine, 32 again. So that goes back down to here, bloop, 16, because I was at 16 if I go down 32. I go back up 32. This is kind of symmetric, isn't it? To positive 16 and then this little bit over here at the end, right, is another 2 times 8, 16. Bam, take me home. 
to the place I belong. So here we go. We got a negative, a positive, a negative, a positive, which means our next graph down here is going to go downhill, uphill, downhill, uphill. And how big are these areas? Well, let's see. It's all symmetric, right? It's 2 by 16, which is 32 divided by 2. It's 16, isn't it? You're 16, you're 16, you're 16, you're 16. It's a symmetric problem. So here we go. We're going to go downhill, 16, slow, then fast. Blue. Okay, to negative 16. And then right here in the middle, right, there's going to be a humpy do because we go from positive to negative. Right? So I go up 16, fast and slow. And then down 16, slow then fast. And then up 16, fast and slow. And there it is. Okay? So from those two graphs, we now know these two things here, okay? This is 16 kilonewtons. This is 16 kilonewton meters. It's not often that those two things come out to be exactly the same, but in this problem, um, they do, okay? So let's start off here and let's see what MC over I is gonna do for us. now. Watch your units, please, people. Please. All right, here we go. 6.5 megapascals, which is newtons over millimeter squared, is equal to, okay, M. I know M. There it is. But that's kilonewtons, so I'm going to do this. 16,000. And I'll put a little N for newtons right there, okay? Times, oh, that's times meters. Oh, no. That's newton meters. We really need millimeters there. We don't need no stinking meters, okay? Say hello to my little friend, millimeter. Okay, we'll get rid of the M's. M, and then C, what is C? C is the distance from the neutral axis to the outer fibers of the parts, right? So this distance here is C, okay? And so if this whole thing is 1.25W, this must be 0.625W, okay? That goes here, 0.625W over I, okay? How do I do I? I is equal to 1 12th, the base times the height cubed, 1.25W cubed, okay? Calculator. See you later. How much is that? Point on point one two five cubed equals er, oh error. Something they didn't like about that. Point one two five cubed equals. Okay, and then divided by twelve is it's not 0.125, it's 1.25 cubed. Let's do it right here, Hanson, come on. Divided by 12 equals, why is it giving me an error, y'all? 0.163, 163W, that's W cubed, and there's another W, so W to the fourth, huh? 0.163W to the fourth, you know what? One of those W's is going away, isn't it? Okay, let's multiply that on the other side. So that times 6.5 equals 1.058 equals 16,000. And there's three more zeros er, 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 times 0.625. Okay, so 16 million dollars times 0.625 divided by, oh, and I forgot this, didn't I? W cubed, divided by 1.058, or I'll just put answer, huh? Still hot in my calculator. Oh, that's a big number. So W cubed equals 
94, 94, 52307, 52307.7. Cube root of that equals, ah, cube root, mm -mm. cube root, answer equals 211.44. Okay, so if sigma's in control, the beam needs to be 211.44 wide. Let's see what happens if tau is in control. Let's see what that gives us, okay? So I'm gonna use that transverse shear equation. So 0.5 newtons over millimeter squared is equal to, here we go, VQ. Now V we know, there it is, 16 thousand newtons, okay? Now we need Q. Do y'all remember how to do Q? Why is Q so hard? It's not that bad. Okay, it's Y times A. Now here it is right here, okay? Q about the neutral axis is that bit there that's shaded. So where's Y bar of the shaded bit? It's right there. If this is 0 0.625, how much is that? Well, that's... 0.625 divided by 2, 0.3125. So Q is equal to 0.3125 W, right? That's the centroid of that, times A, times A, which is 0.625 W times W. WWW dot, let's work this problem here. Okay, so I got point six two five six two five times answer equals. Okay, here's what I got. Point one nine five three W cubed, right? WWW. So that goes right here, 0.1953W, okay? Divided by I, well, oh, we already got that, don't we? There it is right there, 0.163W to the fourth times T, the thickness with two Cs, no? No, the thickness, how thick is our beam? It is, it's W thick, isn't it? Okay? Let's see what we got. Oh, that was W cubed, wasn't it? Why'd y'all let me do that? Well, because three of them are going to go away and cancel out with that and leave me a W squared on the bottom. So 0 0.5 times 0.163 equals 0.0815 W squared is equal to 16,000 times 1953, is that right? Yeah, all these W's went away, didn't they? Yep, point, point one nine five three. okay? So, 16 thousand times point one nine five three divided by point oh eight equals burnt. W squared equals 38341.104. So let's take the square root of that. And what do we get? 195.8. Okay. You know what? Those are pretty close. So which one do we pick here? Well, if we pick this one, it works fine for tau, but if we come up and check sigma and we say, okay, now the beam's only 195 wide, sigma's gonna fail because sigma has to be at least 211 for it to survive. So this is not enough beam. You have to pick the bigger number, okay? So this guy here is the wiener. That's the winner, okay? So W, the width is 211.44, sigma's in control. And the height, well, that's easy, isn't it? 211.44 times 1.25 equals, so the height is going to be 264.3 mm's. 
And that's how big that beam needs to be to carry that load. Well, how did y'all come up with that? Our engineer told us that's what we needed, and that's good enough, isn't it? <laughs> All right, I hope that helps. I'll see you on the next video.